Hi, everybody. Mr. Johnson here, and we are talking about a brand new artist in the artist gallery. So if you are one of my students, like we always do, make sure you have your sketchbook, your artist images, scissors, glue stick, or any kind of adhesive ready so we can cut out these pictures and paste them right along with this video lesson. So who are we talking about today? Today, we're talking about the incomparable Salvador Dali, one of the giants of art history. So as I'm talking about Dali, take uh, some time and be pasting those pictures into your sketchbook. Make sure that you take some of these notes along with it that appear up on your screen. So Salvador Dali is a surrealist artist. Uh, he was born May 11th, 1904 in Figueres, Spain, um, and he died January 23rd, 1989, not that long ago. Um, so uh, Dali was born in the small town outside of Barcelona, Spain, to a prosperous middle class family. The family suffered greatly before the artist's birth because their first son, also named Salvador, died quickly as a young baby, and the young artist was often told that he was the reincarnation of his dead brother, an idea that surely planted various ideas in the impressionable child. His larger-than-life persona blossomed early, along with his interest in art. He had his first drawing lesson at the age of 10. When he was 16, Dali's mother died of breast cancer, which, according to him, was, he said, the greatest blow I ever experienced in my life. In 1922, Dali enrolled at the Special Painting, Sculpture, and Engraving School in Madrid. Ultimately, Dali was expelled from that school in 1926 for insulting one of his professors during a final exam right before graduation. In the early 1930s, Dali was inspired by the paranoic critical method, which is where an artist could tap into their subconscious through irrational thought and a self-induced paranoid state. After emerging from the paranoid state, Dali would create hand-painted dream photographs from what he had witnessed, which often culminated in works of unrelated yet realistically painted objects. He would use this, in me this method his entire life. And now Salvador Dali had a presence in the United States even before his first uh, visit to the country, which was in the mid-1930s. Dali continued to ruffle the waters wherever he went, um, often staging you know, elaborate public appearances. Uh, he's known for his you know, twisted handlebar mustache. Uh, he would do strange things like stand in a bucket of milk while giving a public speech. Um, when Lady Gaga wore the meat dress, uh, she reminded me a lot of Salvador Dali. Um, Dali and his wife Gala uh, loved Hollywood. They moved there to try and become famous, but although that didn't happen for them in the movie industry, Dali did work with director Alfred Hitchcock in a dream sequence in his movie Spellbound in 1945, and he additionally worked with Walt Disney on an animated cartoon called Destino, but the project was suspended uh, following World War II, and, uh, but it was completed in 2003, uh, which I'm going to show you at the end. Uh, Dali's desire to continually and unapologetically turn the internal to the outside resulted in a body of work that not only evolved the concepts of surrealism and psychoanalysis on a worldwide visual platform, but he also modeled permission for people to embrace their selves in all our human glory, warts and all. He's a really cool figure. Uh, so let's look first at this painting, which is the first one you should include in your sketchbooks for my class called The Elephants, painted in 1948. The elephant like this is a recurring theme in a lot of paintings by Salvador Dali. There are a lot of various cultural depictions of elephants where they're often viewed as symbols of strength, dominance, and power due to their size and their bulk, right? Uh, we think of elephants as strong, you know, solid subjects. But in Dali's paintings, he gives his elephants these long, spindly, spider-like uh, legs, um, often being described as these multi-jointed, almost invisible legs. Dali enhances the appearance of strength and weight by depicting these elephants carrying massive obelisks, which are Egyptian-inspired sculptures, which are uh, what are above the uh, backs of the elephants. This, this is an obelisk. 
But on further inspection, you can see that the obelisks are floating. So the elephants aren't really carrying them. What I love is that here Dali is playing with a juxtaposition of the strength symbolized by the elephant and the precarious uh, delicacy and grace by these long, thin legs. So this giant elephant is being supported by these tiny legs. And it's these interesting, weird juxtapositions that Dali becomes known for. Also, I just think they're cool. Uh, but this, of course, is Dali's most famous painting. This is called The Persistence of Memory. It's nicknamed The Melting Clocks, but the title is The Persistence of Memory, painted in 1931. This is a very small painting. It is only uh, one foot and one inch long by nine inches tall. So your sketchbook paper is the same size right, as this finished painting. People assume it's really large, but it's very small. Here, solid objects become inexplicably soft uh, in this bleak and infinite dreamscape, while metal attracts ants like rotting flesh. Uh, here, time loses all meaning. And that's kind of what the painting is about, that while you're dreaming, time is irrelevant, right? They, you know, that feeling of you falling asleep and you, you dream and you wake up, and you're not sure if it's been 10 minutes or three hours, right? That's the feeling that Dali is capturing here, how, which is why the clocks are melting and drooping. That time doesn't, you know, have the same meaning when you're asleep. Um, as in a lot of Dali's artworks, the ants um, represent decay. So here there are ants attacking this golden pocket watch on the left. And then this figure, I'm going to move the... Uh, boxes here off of the, oh, no, off of the screen so that you can see this figure in the center. Um, it's just kind of grossly, grotesquely organic shape on um, this fleshy creature. It's a little bit alien. It's a little bit familiar. It is in fact an exaggeration of Dali's profile, looking at his face from the side. So go with me here. We're looking at a face and profile looking down. So this on the left is the top of its head. Here is its eyebrow, its closed eye with eyelashes, and its nose here, perhaps a tongue sticking out, and then, you know, becomes the neck and, and it kind of fades away. But it is a, a disjointed, distorted human face, which I think is pretty cool. Um, when he painted this, Dali said, the difference between a madman and me is that I am not mad which I think is pretty cool. And the background here is the uh, coast of California, or Dolly's home. So I think that's pretty cool. So the painting is about how time has no meaning while we dream, which I think is, is a pretty cool concept. Uh, this is a painting that you do not need to include, but I think it's really cool. It's called Sleep, painted in 1937 by Dolly. And this painting represents that idea of uh, waking up when you fall, whether it's in a dream, you falling, and then as you hit the ground, you wake up, or if you fall asleep sitting up and your head like droops and it, you kind of, you know, bop your head up and, and you awake. Um, here, this sleeping face is held up by these sticks that Dali called crutches of reality. That when those little sticks break, see how fragile they are, right? When those sticks break, the head falls and then you wake up. So he's trying to depict visually these sensations that happen while we're sleeping and dreaming, which I think is so cool about Salvador Dali. This is a very famous painting by his called The Dream Caused by the Flight of a Bee. Its full title is Dream Caused by the Flight of a Bee Around a Pomegranate a Second Before Awakening. Uh, but it's often called Dream Caused by the Flight of a Bee, painted in 1944. And this is the art that Dali called a dream photograph. So this is a painting of his wife, Gala, she is uh, laying there at the bottom. She's sunbathing. This is based on an event that happened to her while she was outside sunbathing. She was eating a pomegranate. We can see that at the bottom of the screen. And there is a, a little bumblebee flying right on top of that pomegranate, right? Pomegranate's here and a little bumblebee floating right here, uh, right above it. And as she was sleeping and eating, eating that pomegranate, the bee stings her and she awakens. But in her dream, where you've got uh, now up here, what she's dreaming about, you have this pomegranate, this giant fish leaping out of it. Outside of the fish's mouth, two tigers whose uh, black and yellow stripes symbolize the bee. And then this rifle with this bayonet uh, about to stab her in the arm, which symbolizes the stinger 
of the bee. And then also in the background faintly here is another one of Dolly's elephants with those long spindly legs and that obelisk on top. So I think this is really cool. Um, it's a great example of Dolly's style because he paints each element realistically, even though uh, as a whole, you know, the idea is just absurd. But it is based on a dream, which is what a lot of Dolly's paintings are based on. Um, I think that's that's pretty cool. So now, um, this is a lobster telephone, which again is not a uh, an art piece you need to include. But uh, Dolly did make sculptures again, combining these completely unrelated things, like a pomegranate and tigers. Right in the last painting, here a lobster and a telephone, and he's glued them together to make this funky sculpture. I just think that's cool. I would use this in my house. You know, I just think it's awesome. Um, and then the uh, final painting to show you by Salvador Dali is this uh, uh, kind of visual trickery painting called Swans Reflecting Elephants, this optical illusion painted in 1937, where you have here this, uh, this lake with three swans, swan number one, number two in the center, and number three down here, and then these trees behind the swans. But they're, the swan's reflection in the water becomes elephants. So do you see here the body of the swan with its head and its neck, and then the swan's wings? When flipped upside down and seen in the water becomes the trunk of the elephant, and the, the swan's wings become its ears. And then the trees behind it become the elephant's legs. And that happens with, with each of the elephants. The center swan, right, is this elephant here with tree trunks becoming its legs and so on. Isn't that really cool? So your Dali is playing with perception, right? What is real, right? The swans are the elephants. What, what is what we see realistic and how do we even know? which I think is just awesome. Dolly is so cool. He's such a weird figure. You know, do you, you know, so the, just the man standing here on the left. Here's his face, his shirt, his pants. He's just standing there chilling. Um, I love Dolly's artwork. I think it's absolutely incredible. Um, it plays around with the concepts of dreaming and reality and the subconscious. What's real and what's not? How can you even tell? And does it matter? which I think is just cool. So uh, I'm going to play for you uh, Destino, which is the uh, animated short that was created with Salvador Dali and the Walt Disney Company that uh, they were able to finish just a few years ago in 2003 uh, after Dali's death. So they had the, the start of it and then they were able to finish it after him. So I'll play this for you and enjoy the weirdness. I love that. I think that's cool. Oh. 
so I'm going to pause it here, um, you know, with the credits. You can watch Destino on YouTube. I think it's beautiful, weird, totally surrealism, a beautiful combination of Disney and Salvador Dali. I think that is so cool. So for my students, we have a journal prompt for, that goes along with your artist gallery page on our assignment on the Google Classroom. And that question is, what do you dream about and what do you think it might mean? Dali's paintings are all based on dreams or dreamlike experiences. So what do you dream about and what do you think that might mean? Again, when you're finished with your artist gallery page for Salvador Dali, take a photo of it, add it to the artist gallery assignment on Google Classroom, and answer this question, what do you dream about? What do you think it might mean in that text box? Hope you enjoyed Dali. There's so much more work out there to be discovered. If you enjoyed him, you know, Google him, look up all of his stuff. It's incredible. And we'll have another artist talk next week.